Hi everyone. So in today's activity, we are going to be making a port paper fortune teller. So maybe you've made one of these before in class. I know I used to use them with my students in reading um, for different skills to practice. So all you need is a piece of paper and a pair of scissors and um, a marker or a crayon or colored pencil or regular pencil, whatever it is you have. So you're going to start with your piece of paper laid on a flat surface. So use a table and you want it long ways as if you were gonna write on it. And what we're gonna do is um, create a perfect square of paper. So if you have extra origami paper, that would work well, cause that's usually already in a perfect square. But if you don't, we're gonna make a square out of what we have. So I'm gonna fold up this corner to meet the side. And you wanna do this until you fold it, this corner perfectly in half and line up your edges and you want to line it up and then I like to hold that in its place and then make a really good crease okay um, this is origami really because we're uh, folding a piece of paper but the creases really are what help you to make your design work the way it's supposed to so once you do that you're going to take the bottom corner and fold it up to the top so you're going to fold that big triangle in half Again, I'm gonna line it up the best I can. I wanna be pretty precise so I get a nice square sheet of paper. I'm gonna hold it in place and run my finger along the edges to make sure that my creases are nice and crisp. And then you're gonna cut this extra uh, rectangular piece here at the end. You're gonna cut that off. I'm just gonna line it up the best that I can and cut it off. So then when you open up your paper, you should have a nice square of paper that has some really good creases in the middle. Well, not in the middle, across the middle like an X. Okay, and this is what we're gonna use to make our fortune teller. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna take each one of our corners and we're gonna fold it into the middle, right where these two folds meet. Now, one of the things you wanna be careful of as you're doing this, is I'm gonna fold it right to the middle and make sure that you're using your fingers to crease those folds so that you have nice crisp creases. The other thing you wanna watch is you don't wanna overlap your, your corners of paper because then your uh, fortune teller isn't gonna function correctly. So I like to line it up the best I can but leave just a tiny little space in between these two sections of paper, okay? And you're gonna do that with all four corners Again, creasing is important here. And then again, do it one more time, my last one. So none of them are overlapping. They're all just meeting right at the middle. Okay, so once you do that, you'll just have a square piece of paper now. Then you're gonna flip it over so that your folds are underneath. So this is just a solid sheet of paper. And you're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. So once again, you're gonna fold each corner up to the middle and hold it in place while you crease. So it's nice where you have those creases from before that you have a guide as to where to stop the tip of your paper. So same thing as the other side, I'm gonna be careful not to overlap my pieces of paper here. Sometimes depending on how well you created that square of paper from a rectangular piece of paper, sometimes they do end up overlapping a little bit, which is fine, but if you're really overlapping, you'll see it's not gonna come together and operate quite so well. You might have to go back and readjust. So there we go. So now I just made that one square, a little bit smaller, and it should look like this. So the next thing we're gonna do is just add two more creases. So I'm gonna fold this completely in half from top to bottom, crease it well, unfold it. Now I'm gonna crease it left to right. So I'm going to fold it in half this way and put a nice crease in the middle. And that's pretty much it. Now if you notice on one side you have the creases in the middle. So if you count you really have eight sections on this side and when you flip it over you have these little flaps or these little petals and you have four sections. So sometimes it's hard to get this working until you see it firsthand. So on two of your flaps, you're gonna use your pointer finger and your thumb, and you're gonna push them up in those little pockets and then squeeze your, your two fingers together. 
And then you have to work your other two fingers up in the other flaps and press them together. And I'm just kind of turning it underneath and creasing it well. So you're, again, you're using your thumb and your pointer finger on both sides. So to make this work, you pinch them together and then you go, you put your two pointer fingers up and your two thumbs back this way. So you can see those four sections and then you pull them back together and then come out. So it's in and up and in and out, in and up and in and out. So by doing that, you're showing those four sections and those four sections, okay? So now it's time to design it or um, <clears throat> write whatever it is you're going to do on these. And you can use these to study a lot of different um, topics for school. They could be for fun too. They call them fortune tellers because at one time uh, you could write your fortune on the inside uh, to play it like, oh, you're going to get married and have five kids, or you're going to live in Florida, or you're going to win the lottery, um, <clears throat> or something like that, just for fun. But you can also use it to help you study things at school. <clears throat> so you can write sight words. You can use this for states and capitals. You can practice um, different vocabulary words. You could use it for math games. So you could write numbers for addition or subtraction. Division, multiplication, you can create fractions or decimals or convert things back and forth. You can use it for ELA, um, story starters. You could use proper nouns or um, common nouns or different colors or shapes depending on what grade you're in. So you could really make a lot of these and it makes studying fun. <clears throat> so to write whatever it is you're gonna do, I'm just gonna do something like maybe some colors or things like that. So first you want to turn it on the side that has the four like petals or flaps where you put your fingers into. And I'm just going to write some colors. So I'm going to write blue, yellow, green, and I'm going to write purple. Okay, so just to show you when you have it together, <clears throat> that's what you're going to see on the outside, those four larger sections. And then when you move it, those eight sections, that's where you see on the other side. So this is the side with the four, and this one now really has eight sections. Now you can put on there whatever you want. You can put numbers, you can put additional colors. Um, you could put shapes, whatever you want. I'm just going to put some random numbers here. Uh, I don't want to repeat any. I'm going to put zero and then I'll put maybe five. Okay, so again, I'm just going to show you each time we add something where you're seeing it. So there's those colors and then you're seeing one, four, zero, and six. When I close it and pull out, you're seeing the other four numbers of five, two, three, and eight. So you get to see those numbers. Then the next thing you want to do the final one is open up each of those flaps and now you have eight sections to write some little messages, whatever you're going to write. Um, it could be nice messages, maybe a smiley face, maybe I want to say hello, um, maybe you could say you win, um, maybe if you're playing another game. Um, uh, you win $10, whatever it might be. And I'm just going to put some shapes here just for time's sake. Um, put another smiley and I'm going to put, I don't know, just a little squiggle <laughs> just so you can see. So how you actually play this game, um, when you're playing with your friends. So one person is working the fortune teller and then the other person is going to pick. So you can say, okay, pick a color. And if you pick say purple, you spell out purple by moving your finger. So you go P-U-R-P-L-E. And then that person would pick a number. So if they pick the number five, um, you have to move the fortune teller that many times. So I would move it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. And then they pick one more number. So let's just say they pick number four and then whatever is underneath number four would be their fortune or whatever it would be. So that would be the little squiggly. You can put stickers on it. Um, 
you could draw things. It could be, I don't know, maybe you want to play charades and it could be um, the, the things you have to act out. You could really, really use these for a lot of different things. And they're really fun to use because they make learning fun. It's called kinesthetic learning. So when you're using your hands, it's like hands-on, it's minds-on, it's fun. You're learning by doing. Um, you're not just looking at a piece of paper maybe to learn some concepts from school. You can do it with a partner. So, you know, studying and practicing things is a lot more fun when you have someone to do it with. So it's just another another fun way to learn by playing a game. And you can quiz each other, um, you and your friends. It's, it's quick because you can unfold it. You can tuck it in your notebook or in a book. You could use it as a bookmark. So you can always carry it with you um, without ruining it because you can lay it flat and then you can pop it back up together when you're ready to use it. So be creative. You can color these in, you can use colored paper, um, whatever you have, construction paper. Just again, make sure you're creasing them well so that it folds back and forth well. So I hope you enjoyed your fortune teller.